The Spin-Off Podcast Network. This is Kiwi is back for a brand new season with more inspiring kōrero from special guests including rugby player, father and role model TJ Peronara. My family bring me joy. Rugby brings me joy too, but it's not the same joy as my family brings me. And global dancer and choreographer Kirsten Dodgen. For some reason people think I'm very intimidating. Listen to the new season of This Is Kiwi, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in collaboration with Kiwi Bank. Available now wherever you get your podcasts. Talo for lover. I'm Madeline Chapman, editor at The Spin-Off. If you have the means, consider supporting our high-quality journalism by becoming a Spin-Off member. Sign up now at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. Nair is public interest journalism funded through New Zealand on air. No, my haere mai, whakatau mai rā, he kō nei pūrangi tēnei pāna, ki te ao Māori, me te ao huri huri. I'm Leonie Hayden, this is a podcast about being Māori in the modern world. E ki a nei, a nei, mihi mai rā. This week, we're going to the happiest place on earth, Disney, in te reo Māori, of course. When the Disney film The Lion King came out in 1994, I was about 13 years old, slightly above the target demo, but a fan nonetheless, um, mostly because of the schmaltzy soundtrack, because I am a dorky lover of musicals. I didn't, however, harbour any weird feelings for Simba or Nala, like some of my peers did. I'm not shaming you, but, you know, they're animated lions. Uh, For those who aren't familiar, who live under rocks and such, it's Hamlet, but with lions uh, and other animals from sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, The music is a mixture of uh, English and Zulu, Kosa and Swahili languages and Alta John. Uh, And it has, of course, since been turned into a hit Broadway musical, which Iyoku Neifakaro is a bit better because there's a lot more focus on the African dialects and the cast is largely African and POC. Hioi anō. Soon The Lion King will be added alongside Moana as Disney's second film to be re-recorded in Te Reo Māori so that our tamariki can continue to be raised in a world where popular culture sees them and reflects their experience in their reo. Is everyone on board with that? No, of course not. We are a diverse group of people who see the world in myriad different ways. Criticisms of commercialisation of the reo and giving access to our culture to a a multi-corporate monolith are, of course, to be expected, um, all of which will be explored today. Our guest today is one of the masterminds behind the real Disney films. We'll be chatting to her about how it began, what it's like navigating a creative partnership with one of the world's largest entertainment conglomerates, and where it's going next. Ite iwi, mai, tata mai rā. A hoki mai anō, I am joined once more with my co-hosters with the mosters, Mariana Johnson and Te Kuru Jews, kia ora kōrua. Kia ora hoa. Kia ora rā. Kei te pēhia. Well, mi haro tēnā ko, uh, kōna i, I Purangi, mm. ko te kaupapa o kōna I, I Purangi, o te reofication, <laughs> kupu hau, <nah. laughs> of Disney, of Lion King. But generally I'm like, oh, tai mai tata, takura, takurua. Winter, eh? Feeling that. But at least we've got something exciting and bubbly to, to get excited about. Yeah. How about you, Takuru? Hi, Hariko and Hikaka Nao, Kia Puta Tene Kiriata, Mihi and Nakinga Ringa, Toy Kinga Ringa Fao, Naringa Rehe, or Te Kaupapa, Peda Kia Chelsea Man, Arata, E Tui Tui, E Raranga in a real Kitene Kiriata, E Tonga Ma Matata, Ma Tata, Ma Tata. Uh, Mokopuna. So yeah, real, real excited for this uh, Matariki release. Can't wait to see the film. Kia ora. And that's great that you guys are both excited because there are, uh, I don't know, people are not exactly for the commercialization uh, of our deal in the mainstream, but I feel like we're all pretty much on the same boat in terms of what's best for our tamariki is best for our deal, ne? and what's best for our deal is best for our tamariki. Yeah, well, more, more on a... Um, wasn't immune from re- receiving Aye. criticism. The movie Moana, Disney's real Māori Moana. Uh, there was there were you know there was a little bit of that, but uh, I didn't really talk about it publicly because I just you know what's the point? Um, I was um, 
I was all for it. I'm all for it if it's putting our real one of my kaumatu papa, um, Warato Huya was involved. And who am I to say that he doesn't know Aye. best? So, you know, these kind of kaupapa, yeah, kataka mai ngā hua ki ngā tamariki, uh, ki a hoki. I've watched Moana heaps. Uh, my nephew, my nieces, they love it. They see uh, little brown, big brown people on screen and it just normalises their, their ahurea and their reo for them. So Yeah, tika, eh? Hey. Mm. Were you guys big D- Disney kids? Were you Disney fans when you were kids? Oh, Lion King, 100%. Oh, I've seen that a million times. Probably know all the lines. I think my mum was, my, like, growing up, like, my parents were always a bit funny about American media. Uh-huh. And so we weren't we weren't raised on Disney. Um, but, yeah, like, watched Lion King, loved it. My one of my personal favorites was Pocahontas. Oh, yeah. Because she was the she because she's you know native. So I'm like, oh, she's like me, and mm. uh, you know, singing to the Manu, and it was <laughs> beautiful. Falling in love with white men, relatable now. Nah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Relatable now. Nah. Wow. Nah, nah. You didn't um, you didn't know the the themes at that at that young age at that innocent Aye. age. You didn't was it, weren't aware of the the colonial. And that sort particular of. Puraco in <laughs> like the real life version of that ended. Very differently than the Disney ending there, doesn't she? Yeah. Or some doesn't he get like brutally murdered by that iwi? Oh, I can't remember. I don't even. He dies, yeah, eh? Yeah, so. not her. <laughs> I don't know. She's real pody about it. Yeah, but that is a good example, I suppose, of where, say, for Indigenous people, a mistrust of an organisation or a, a corporation like Disney may have started because, as we know now. Um, that that particular Pūrāko was whitewashed and given a happier ending and um, the mātauranga of the Indigenous people who that story is about was um, ex- exploited and commercialised. Um, so then when we got to Moana, it seems that Disney was actually very careful not to repeat mistakes of the past and they did a lot of their rangaho with Pacific peoples and with Māori. I felt like it showed as well. I mean, it wasn't perfect. Yeah. It wasn't right. perfect. I'll say that. It wasn't perfect. Yeah. The, the part where the rock does the haka, like, that was cringe. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the way they pronounce, Lin-Manuel Miranda pronounces motu nui. He says motu nui. But the, the Māori version, perfect, Aye. flawless. Uh, can't fault it. Of course. So, fault so <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a bit of, I guess, until we are... And that's the great thing about what uh, Tweedy and Chelsea are doing is that they are showing Disney, whether Disney are aware of it or not, the right way right. to do it. And okay. I mm. believe that eventually we'll get they'll get to a point where they can just rock up and do, you know, these big blockbuster Disney movies as they're coming out. Like, I think that's their aspiration and I'm confident after watching them behind the scenes, I, I'm like, yeah, they're going to do it and this is cool. I always feel like the important thing is with it, you know, when you've got big multi- you know, massive corporations involved with our language, with our culture, is that our people are getting, are benefiting from it. And Putia wise especially, you know, with Moana, it had a lot of our people you know, acting in it. You know, that, that's in the original English version. Um, and so I think as well, my whakaro is always that this is the world we live in. And so yeah. long as that Putia is coming back and it's done with our people involved, with our guidance, with our kaumatua, like your kaumatua te kuru involved, then I'm pretty toe with it. Yeah. I can see though why people can get dirty. It's it's always, but yeah, what you can't avoid it. And and you know they they do make, like Disney. They make mean films, <laughs> they make really good films. They're real good at it, eh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doing it for a wee bit. <laughs> yeah, Kate yeah. Fakka Maori to Tato Wow, and that's just one avenue of doing it. Yep, we need to make our own films, and we're doing that as well. And this is just that we can't just. Uh, leave all other media to its own device. You need to get in there and fuck a Maori there too. That's what Kapai. I reckon. Hi, hard out. We can't be in our own silo, eh? Yeah. Well, our kids don't live in a don't live in a Maori bubble. As hard as we try and curate it, they will be exposed to all kinds of media from all over the world. So the more of it that's in Maori, the better. Yeah. And I mean, I've got Radu with like Netflix, but when I saw, you know, um, how Mum decolonized the screen streaming on Netflix, far like, you know, kua kita kungako. Oh, yeah. To see our stories and and our rangatira of cinema featured on you know the world's biggest streaming platform, so well somewhere you can watch mm. it. <laughs> yeah, 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 true <laughs> that it's accessible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, um, But as Tekaru has teased, we will be talking after the break with one of the producers of Te Reo 
uh, Disney, Te Reo, Moana and the upcoming Lion King, Chelsea wins Stanley. So see you after the break. Do you find it hard staying optimistic with all the financial news in the media? I'm Bernard Hickey, and on my podcast, When the Facts Change, I'm here to help you navigate the ever-changing landscape of economics in Aotearoa. So join the conversation every Friday on When the Facts Change, brought to you by the Spin-Off Podcast Network in partnership with KiwiBee. Kia ora, I'm Duncan Grieve, founder of The Spin-Off. You can help us keep all of The Spin-Off's award-winning journalism free for everybody by becoming a member today at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. No mai hoki mai anō. Our guest today is the producer of Moana and the Lion King in Te Reo Māori. He uri no Ngāti Ranginui ia, tēnā koe tauranga Moana. She's a long-time champion of Indigenous cinema all over the ao, mentored by the one and only Merita Mita. She's produced documentaries on both Merita and Tamaiti, as well as hits like What We Do in the Shadows and Jojo Rabbit, for which she was nominated for an Oscar. Thank you very much. Uh, and the excellent recent dystopian sci-fi drama Night Raiders, uh, which was a co-pro between Indigenous wahine from Aotearoa and Canada. Kia ora, Chelsea Winstanley. No mai e hoa. Kia ora, nanahinui kia koutou. Oi, ka pai. I know that it seems like every week we have guests that all of us are already mates with. Um, and we had just been discussing um, that Tukuru has also been involved in the production of The Lion King in Te Reo. Um, and full disclosure, Chelsea and I are at uh, Takiura in Rumaki Reo together. Chelsea's one of my po on that journey. Thank you for that, Ehoa. Uh-huh. But, you know, he'd seen all Māori to just, like, everyone knows each other, everyone's related. It's ka pai. I'm just quietly, massively fangirling over here. <laughs> it's hard <laughs> not to. <laughs> We're all fan, fanning out about each other. I think this is, this is beautiful. Oh. I've all, you know, known all of you. And it's so lovely to get to know Tukuru better and we have over this Disney Kaupapa, which has been amazing. Um, thank you, bro, for all your mahi on that. It's been really awesome to have you part of it. Oh, kia ora. Yeah, you've just got the cream of the crop working on this production. Yeah, awesome experience. I'm not a voice, by the way, listeners. I'm not a voice <laughs> in this. But I did get to sing a, a young line, a sneaky line in one, of the, one of the songs, which was uh, definitely a highlight for me. But yeah, yeah really, really awesome experience. Yeah, I recorded it on my phone for evidence. Uh, but <laughs> Yeah, te nā koe chasi o te rā koutou. Awesome, eh, that you guys are doing. Yeah. yeah. Even myself, like I'm a fan. you got Rob Ruha in the studio doing amazing things and just watching him, uh, observing how he and Pere Wihongi direct the singers and the voice actors as well and it, just sitting in there and listening to the mātanga reo like Pania Papa and that. Anyway, I could go on, but it's just yeah. really uh, mm. valuable experience for me and one that I'll always remember. Yeah, awesome. Mm. Yeah, that is that is part of that beautiful uh, whānau, whanaungatanga environment that it's created and it started with Moana. It's just gotten bigger and better and yummier and it's just going to get even better and bigger because we're doing more, you know. Oi. I mean, it, we've all come to expect these amazing things from you, Chels, but um, how do you even start? Like how do you go about just being like this little ragtag group from Aotearoa approaching a huge multinational like Disney and being like, hey, do you want to do something together? Like, where did you even start with Moana? (laughs) Well, Moana had just come out and we were still living in Aotearoa at the time. And actually Tweety and I had, um, we were having dinner out at our place in Piha one night and we had our babies around us and we were just having a yarn. And, you know, it's always such a hard slog, eh? No, No matter who you are in the space of working towards anything to do with Māori or especially um, to do with the reo or wanting to be a part of that. The, the money is small. There's not much to go around mm. and we're all kind of scrambling for the same stuff and everyone has got a, um, an amazing point of view and, and should be supported for what they want to do with that. So, But there's just not enough to go around. So we were just thinking, man, how can we also get our, our reo into the mainstream but allow our babies to to kind of um, experience that reo in a public space? Mm. And we thought about the cinema and we thought about 
go- going and watching Moana, the English version, and just how beautifully received that film was because of the Pūraka, really, the story being set and what it was, and it was very Pacific. It was very us. They were just basically talking to us, but talking to us in English. And so we were just writing on the um, windows one day at home, like, wow, wow, what would a dream be? What, what would the, what the movie, what could it look like? What could the landscape be? So we just started writing all these things up you know, on those um, window pens things. Yeah. <laughs> just covered the whole kitchen windows with all these dreams. And it was just really about, well, Moana just came out. Why don't we just go for that one first? Because the relationship with the Pūraka was there already. It would be an easy translate, if you like, like the story. It's already in our hearts and minds. Oh. Why don't we? Why don't we just try? What have we got to lose? And I think that's just what we kind of do anyway, right? No matter who we are working in the space, we're like, there's nothing to lose. You're only going to get a no or a yes. So let's go see if we can get an I instead oh, of a K. And uh, that's you and Tweedy Waititi, Te Queenie or Te Whanau Ah, yeah, Aye. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't imagine that many people say no to Tweedy. So then then what do you do? <laughs> you just say, okay, we've got this huge dream. Well, yeah, so we ended up getting an email from – because, like, Disney is, is, like you say, such a machine. It's such a beast and there's so many different factions of it. Um, and they just acquired uh, – Marvel and FX and they were just, you know, basically buying up the whole Bloomin' universe of media spaces <laughs> they do. But we um, had a friend who was working on the lot there who managed to get us a an email. That's all we needed was an email of who to contact who deals with the voices and dubbing. Because, you know, they do French, German, Spanish, all the classic languages. So we needed to get to that person who deals with international voices and we reached out and um, it was uh, there, we, there were a lot of things in our favour because Moana, you know, already had Māori cast mm. and they, you know, they didn't realise the significance of that for us but you had Rachel House, you had Jermaine Clement and Tim Werner Morrison and we had um, our Samoan brother Oscar Kitely in there. So we could approach them from that perspective saying, you know, we want to do this film in our own reel and you've already got your top voices are already Māori, so would you allow us the opportunity to do that? The great thing about Moana when they were going around kind of researching you know, and a little bit of props here. They did do a bit of research, old Disney, <laughs> years before, and they went around the, um, the Pacific. But um, the Tahitian people who were involved had said, we must have this, a version of this in our language. So there kind of was a precedent already set, but Disney didn't really take them too seriously, I don't think, because um, they just kind of left them to their own devices to do that, whereas we were coming at it pretty strong with cast already attached, we said we'd already we would have those casts that you already have in your original. We would have them, and we would make sure that they would do their own voices, Ite or Maori. So for them, they were kind of like, "Oh, that sounds cool. Okay, <laughs> you know." And that kind of a little bit. Oh, I don't mean this in a bad way, but patronising to this to, to the extent that they just they just honestly didn't know the quality that we that we could actually provide and give to them. So. When, you know, that film was finally delivered to them, I think they were genuinely blown away yeah. because they still have a, um, a quality control. So we had to do our final mix. After all the recording of dialogue and all the beautiful wire was done, we still had to um, take the, the project up, up there. But before all that happened, we actually had to present our case in front of them, like in front of this board of execs like going into the LA offices and sitting around this big table of all these people who, you know, were like, oh, wow, these Maoris want to come and do this. <laughs> this is so neat. Oh, my God. Um, but because we had a pretty strong case, we put in front of them a budget, which was piddly, man. Like We were just trying to scrape together anything we could. The cast already attached, who were already Maori, and they were just like, oh, this seems so neat. Okay, cool. <laughs> and just left us to kind of our own devices. The only thing that they wanted to do was make sure that they, you know, had a look at the top five choices of any character. But it wasn't really a lot. All we were trying to find were the character, our main, our main, our main ones, they were like Jaden Randall who ended up playing little beautiful Moana. Yeah. And, of course, Peter P who played Maui. So it was... It was, uh, again, it was kind of a good start because Moana, we didn't have to 
find too many characters as opposed to the one that we've just done, a whole different beast. But you learn so many things along the way. So then, yep, they gave us a go-ahead. And then honestly, so I was in L.A. Um, around the exec table kind of doing all that stuff. Meanwhile, Tweety and Rob and Scylla and Rachel House and all them were already back here kind of just doing it because we were like, shit, man, if we don't get this under like underway now, pretending that we've got the green light, we're going to be screwed. We won't have enough time yeah. to get it. So they were already like doing it and finding people and translating and <laughs> doing all this stuff. We were just like, just, just keep going, man, just keep going as if we've got the green light, as if we've got the green light. And luckily, with the support of Tamangai Paho, Tupuni Kōkiri, and oh, who else helped us out on that one? I'll think of that. You can insert that later. But, uh, <laughs> New Zealand on air. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was Māori all the way. And thanks to Larry Parr, actually. You know, bless Larry, and always grateful to Papa Larry for that because he believed in us at that in that moment that we reached out to him. And he said, leave it with me. I'll do what I can to help you. And he did. And it wasn't a huge amount of money, but it was enough to to get us over the line. And people did that project for the love, man, honestly. So many people did that for no- nothing. But it was because that project was so incredible and they were so blown away by the response and the quality. I honestly, truly believe that getting Lion King and others that we've got um, had a lot to do with that. So I imagine then the process of getting the green light for Lion King was easier, but then the casting yeah. sounds like it was very hard. Yeah. Um, so the the green light was easier, um, but then, of course, other things come along that you want to ensure. Like this time we were like, man, we deserve to be able to pay our actors better and pay our translators better and just everyone. Everyone deserves to get something for this. Of course, again, Disney are not – going to put any money into it because their job is not about um, revitalizing our language. You have to come to terms with the fact that this massive multinational company are like, okay, you go, little natives, you go. (laughs) But they're they're not like, um, here you go, here's a bunch of money because, damn, you guys can do this. Because they they don't see us as an audience to... This is such a horrible word. I hate this word in the industry. They don't see us an audience as to exploit. That term exploitation is used in contracting, and it's just such a horrible, horrible word. And this is something, um, you know, I'm hoping we can change in terms of our contracting and our IP and getting more Māori and Pacific Islanders uh, lawyers in the space of IP and entertainment because the wording in and of itself is so... Um, derogatory in a way the exploitation of language because if that's what we're doing we're trying to um, play our part in the revitalization of language you have to also struggle with the commodification of the language because it's a product on screen so there's all these yucky spaces you have to kind of tread while you're doing this stuff I guess on a positive side, they are trying to exploit us for once. <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> or extract our resources. <laughs> so they they aren't, but we don't have any control. At the same time, these are the things we have to give up. We don't get to participate in any of it. So we had to come um, and just be really upfront with everyone. We don't get to hold any rights either, and that's. We had to say to ourselves, okay, that's not what we're doing here. What we are trying to do is show Disney and other big companies like them that we are an audience that exists. And the only way they're going to know that is if we get our people to the cinema, we get our people on board in the language, we get them to see the hype and the excitement that comes when we put out a Te Reo Māori version of this film to show them, you know what, next time you want to come with your Buzz Lightyear coming out soon, by the way, but the (laughs) next um, film, you can do that in two languages because you'll do that in other countries. How about you do it here too because we deserve to have it in both languages. We have an audience that is hungry for it. And look, we can show you that they'll go to the cinema and watch it. So at the end of the day, that's all they care about. So that horrible word of exploitation that comes into it is literally just a term to say what other avenues can we put this uh, film in, now we talk platforms, now we talk, you know, Disney Plus and whatnot. Where else can they commodify the, the, the film or the product? But that's the reality we're living in at the moment and that's really just to show that we are an audience that exists 
we can support a film in our own language and we have a community that want to do it too. So that was our always our facade or always our purpose and our goal was to show them and then others should follow suit because if they are one of the biggest, they are the biggest entertainment companies in the world and if they take us seriously, others should as well. Me huddle, and you're doing it. Was Lion King, or sorry, Moana first and foremost, um, the real Māori version of that, was that an impetus for you to go and seek out your own deal? Or, yeah, was that part of influencing your own commitment to your deal? Yeah, I've, um, kia ora. I think I've, I mean, I've always wanted to kōrero i te Māori and I've gone and tried other avenues and done night classes and different parts of my life um, from after school, you know, going to tertiary education, more so than actually at kura or kura tuarua or anything like that, but as an adult, I suppose. Um, And I just found it really hard. Life, you kind of struggling and have life as well as trying to do that. And when you're doing it in a part-time environment, it's either normally at a night class or maybe a one class a week if, you, if you're doing other classes at uni. And I found mm. that really difficult to um, to maintain. And here comes one of my peepees. Kia ora, baby. <laughs> Baba, pizza boy? Uh-huh. Okay. To, to erua māuiwi ta, ta maiti in the whare at the moment, and one of them's not really māuiwi at all, but she's like, <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here to tautoko mum. I'm here to tautoko my older sister. <laughs> Oh, ka aroha. <laughs> but actually, well, there you go. That that my that one of my biggest reasons I'm going into full time this year because um, they need the support in the fare, and the older they get, the more you realise that um, they need the support because it's all right, safe, and this is probably what we both feel too. Eh, Leone, at at the kura, you go to kura and you're in the safe environment. It's real Māori everywhere, and it's all throughout the whole day and it's beautiful but as soon as you step out of that environment it's, the real Pākehā just slams you everywhere and you're just even more aware of it all the time now yeah. <laughs> you're like grrr and you get in a good bit ready now because you're like what the hell <laughs> it's just everywhere and it's it makes you frustrated it's I'm having a bit of a struggle with the frustration of um not being able to get out of that lovely kura environment and walk out of there and be supported outside of it it's freaking frustrating so they're my biggest um uh, reason for learning as well as I suppose just a deep desire always wanted to have it my mum never had it because her mother was the generation that was beaten at school that kind of stuff that intergenerational trauma that comes along with language loss and my brother and sister don't have it but has to kind of start somewhere, I suppose, mm, and totally what's that okay. one generation to lose five to get it back? Quarter to one, I'm not sure, but I think that's three. Yeah, and that's one of the awesome things about having these um, movies is it's another resource, eh, that enables us to curate a Maori language bubble for our kids. I know that. I mean, it's idealistic, but because Maori parents these days don't just have, I know a lot of them do have Moana on repeat. <laughs> but they also have to, you know, resort to letting their children watch other shows. But I dream of a time where you guys have done 20 movies and we can just have those on repeat, <laughs> 20 oh, I, real yeah. Māori Disney movies. Absolutely. It's so true, eh? Because you, then you realise how starved we are just for that kind of awesome quality content too that our kids are just drawn to naturally. And so they should. Yeah. Why not? They want the quality. But I love this whakaro that um, I went and watched Stan Walker the other day. He was recording like a Matariki special. And um, he was talking about everything he does now, his kind of ceiling is his mokopuna or his baby's floor that's where they're starting at his ceiling. And I was like, oh, my God, that is amazing. What a beautiful um, whakaro to have because everything we do is just another step up to what you're talking about, Tukuru, like they're going to, our baby's going to walk into a world where actually they'll just see the Lion King girl Māori and think that that was the first version ever. And why wouldn't they? They'll be (laughs) like, Damn, what that Pākehā one just stole our awesome film. Like. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah. And so there's a big focus, um, as everyone will have read and heard by now, on um, our meter for the different characters uh, in the film mm. and the Lion King, Reo Māori. Um, who, 
who developed that idea? Who decided that that was like an important focus for this one? I think it came out of a conversation between Rob and Tweedy, you know, when we were thinking about, okay, how best, because obviously the Moana one was more Whanapa Nui dialect, Mita there, and it made sense, you know, they're a Fano, they are an iwi that are coastal, so that made sense. And we were thinking about Lion King, because we could have gone out with Frozen first, but we decided that we'll go with Lion King because it gave us an opportunity, and this was their whakaro, that we could look at all those different amazing kararehe in the film, the characters, all the different animals that have their own little nuances and their own little funny little ways of being anyway. It was a perfect opportunity to say, oh man, why don't we just divvy this up and allow iwi katoa to participate in this film and also you know, the whakaro of it being kotahitanga. And mm. we felt like we needed to kind of bring us together over the last few years. Eh? We've had COVID to deal with. There's been some serious stink times. So we just wanted to um, have an opportunity to celebrate. Aye. And this was a beautiful way to whakangahau te reo Māori, take it out to the masses, allow people to also um, know maybe who don't know that there are different dialects and um, to celebrate all those yummy little nuances and that's where all the delicious humour comes from too. Oh. You know? There's some just beautiful gems in there that people are just going to love and appreciate because you'll feel like, oh, my gosh, they're talking to me oh. or, or, or my mitta or whatever, you know. It's, it's so clever. It's really, really clever. I think it comes at a good time because there's been a, you know, the last, I was talking to Pani about it, Pani Papa, uh, who was one of the language mentors, there's been the, the resurgence, the revitalization efforts since the 70s and 80s. And we've moved through the 90s, 2000s, 2010s, whatever you call that decade. And here we are now, <laughs> 2020s, 2020s. And everyone's ready for, I feel, uh, the next step or it's time for us to emphasize really nationally the resurgence of mita. Uh, there are mm-hmm. obviously people within their own rohe who have maintained their mita within their whanau, uh, but there is a growing awareness from second language learners that learning the general national sort of uh, corpus of te reo Māori is the first step, but acknowledging that the next step beyond that is to learn their own mita from their own hapu, and that only strengthens our our ties to Fano, whenua, hapu, and, and so it just makes us stronger as a people and as individuals as well. So I think it's really great timing, and this movie, I'm excited on how that's going to reaffirm our, our pursuit of our our iwi identities. Mm. Rana. Was anyone um, ho-ha about the uh, whatever meets, I, I forget which was assigned to, like the bad guys, <laughs> to the, the hyenas, <laughs> the hyenas. And Scar? We were like, oh, well, that's those <laughs> ones from down there. <laughs> <laughs> mm, no. I mean. There's hyenas in every iwi. <laughs> well, <laughs> kia ora. Yeah, there is. And and also, um, hey, we all have a chance to, uh, second chance, chance chance to grow it and chance to learn from our mistakes. <laughs> now, I think there's just the fun in it all, and that was a beautiful thing about um, having Tatiru McLeod take care of that. But, uh, he was amazing, and uh, people are just excited just to have the opportunity to hear their mita. Um, sure, they might be perceived as the baddies in the movie, but not really. Like, no. you know, the, hey, that's part of the circle of life. Good, good or bad? Circle of life. <laughs> yeah. uh, kōrero mai te um, whakamauri te o Circle of Life? Te toi oranga. Te toi oranga. There you go. Have you got the song sheet there, oi? <laughs> He's practising. Te toi oranga. <laughs> waiata, mai, waiata mai te kuru. Ah, uh, no thanks. Oh, our, Come on. Come on. <laughs> 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 um, and so we've got all, is it all of the original soundtrack translated? Yeah, so all the songs have been translated. Yes, yeah, so the the beauty of the dialogue and the Waiata translations is that it's more of the Modi within, because it's not just a straight up translation right. word for word. There's just no point in doing that, and that's the beauty and the magic okay, of, of Rob and Scylla and Petty and Hannah doing all the music, and then you have Tweety and all the amazing translators adding their bits, you know, for what makes sense in their meta, but also what makes sense for humour, all those different little nuances. Oh, so, into our Māori. 
Yeah, and Te Māori. So we're not just giving them a straight-up translation, a little bit cheeky. Well, kind of not cheeky, but, I mean, we just can't. Otherwise, it would kind of be a bit boring and wouldn't make sense. Like some of the jokes wouldn't land mm. either. Mm. And how many how many screenings are we getting? When, when and where? When and where are we going? Oh, yeah, right on. You know, the cool thing about this is, and here's actually the thing about staying in a cinema, you will only stay in a cinema so long as people go. So an exhibitor, being a Hoyts, a Reading, a whatever, event cinema, they'll be like, mm, 10 people turned up today, I'm pulling it tomorrow. Like literally they are that hardcore. So it doesn't matter um, if they might have some some screening set, you might check out their website. Uh, if you don't go, mm. they just pull you. They literally just pull you. They don't care. They, they, don't, they're not, they don't even have to guarantee a certain number to anyone. It's all about business for them. So what we're trying to do and the way we're trying to schedule our release is we come out, we've got a premiere on the 21st of June, then we have our nationwide release starting on Thursday the 23rd, and from that moment on it's in cinemas. But what we're trying to do is hit that daytime market because there's two weeks before the school holidays and often anyone, no matter who you are, if you've got a film in the theatres and a school holiday, you forget about it, you're out because you'll just get swamped by American blockbusters, that kind of stuff. Because literally the exhibitors, that's all they care about, making the money. So if we can show them that we have an audience, that we are keen and we're going to come to your theatre, you just have to keep knocking on their door. You can you can ring any theatre. We've actually got it up on our website now on um, matuamedia.nz or on our Facebook page, it'll be up there too, Disney Del Māori. You can see all the theatres that are participating and say that they will play it, but it's up to us to put pressure on them yeah. to say, hey, my whole school wants to come and we're going to try and maximise that opportunity in the two weeks leading up to the school holidays because traditionally exhibitors don't get daytime you know, cinemas, bookings anyway, because no one's going. Yeah. But if we can mm. get our schools to go, we can get our whānau to go during the day, that shows them we're serious. We have an audience. We will come. If you put us on, we will come. So if there's screenings already advertised, then we need everyone listening yeah. who wants to go to pre-book your ticket. I noticed one yeah. one already um, scheduled at events, so I, I bought some tickets for that, mm-hmm. and there were already um, maybe 30 seats sold. That I saw on that one. Yeah. So book now, Farno. If you see, if you see it already scheduled somewhere. I know that um, some cinemas are going to do really good deals, like Silky Otter, um, who uh, have just a two screener in Orake, but they also have eight set, eight cinemas in uh, Christchurch and eight in Nelson. Silky Otter. <laughs> They're going to do a five dollar ticket. Five dollar ticket with a one dollar popcorn. That's beating everybody else. Oh yeah. Really yeah. Nice. So go. They're going to do two screenings a day for the whole two-week period leading up to the holidays. So that's the kind of pressure, that's the kind of support we need. We need that cinema and we need others to follow suit. Because, you know, 10 bucks a ticket still is a bit of money, still is a bit of cash for our babies. So kia ora, silky otter. Especially when you're taking the whole whānau. Yeah, so props to them. We need all the other cinemas to follow suit like that. They can do it. They can do five bucks a ticket for our babies. Come on. Hi, ka pai. Main. Mm. Uh, Ihoa, thank you so much for coming on our little potty this week. I'm all excited all over again <laughs> about, about the movie. I love a musical, God damn it! Oh, you wait till you hear that, those waita, you're just going to be going crazy, really? honestly. I can't oh, wait. It's so exciting. Hey, Takuru. Takuru can vouch for that, eh, hey, bro? Oh, the songs are pretty special. Half pie. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Ihoa, um, everybody. 23rd of June, Lion King and Cyril uh, is out in cinemas. You heard the woman put pressure on your local cinema so that they keep playing it. Uh, thank you to the I Hear Butler, our producer, for making us sound pie week after week. Um, find us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. Also, come find us on Instagram, Net the Ao Māori Podcast. Hey, Akua, Nate. NAIR is public interest journalism funded through New Zealand On Air and brought to you by the Spin Off Podcast Network. It was hosted and researched by Leonie Hayden with Te Kuru Jews and Mediana Johnson. NAIR was produced by Te Aihe Butler with senior production from Jane Yee and project management from Mark Kelleher. Hey. 
Are you curious about how business can be better? I'm Simon Pound, and I host Business is Boring, a podcast where I caught it all with some of the most interesting people in entrepreneurship, commerce, and making things happen. Tune in to Business is Boring every Tuesday, brought to you by the Spinoff Podcast Network in partnership with Smart Business Lab. Kia ora e te iwi, te Aihe Butler here, Podcast Manager at the Spinoff. If you enjoy listening to our podcasts, consider supporting our mahi by signing up to become a spin-off member at thespinoff.co.nz slash donate. The Spinoff Podcast Network.